Samsung's big master plan is all set. The Galaxy S21 series is right on the corner, but with that comes Samsung's first massive W after some time. Samsung's biggest mistake was the Exynos 990 processor. This continues to haunt them, but revenge is always sweeter. In a new report, it's been revealed what Samsung truly wants to do, which is breaking Qualcomm's domination. In the Android world, we have different brands, Vivo, Xiaomi, Oppo, Google, OnePlus, they all use Qualcomm chips, whether it's their flagship Snapdragon 865 or a very widely used mid-range Snapdragon 765, Qualcomm is literally everywhere. They have a pretty big dominance in the Android smartphone space that only Samsung or Huawei can break because they are the only Android brands who make their own processors. But now with Huawei out of the games, things have completely changed. You see, Qualcomm has already applied for the license in order to sell their chips to Huawei and if it's granted it's going to be such a huge move for them. Huawei still has pretty strong sales in China. Also Donald Trump is not the president of United States anymore so US might actually go a bit lenient on Huawei. At least they might allow some big companies to do business with them and if this happens it's gonna make Qualcomm even more overpowered. So Samsung on the other hand doesn't want this one-sided domination hence the plan is all set. As per latest report coming from Business Korea, Samsung is planning to supply its Exynos processors to Oppo, Xiaomi, Vivo, and possibly even OnePlus in 2021. We've also heard that Samsung is making a processor for Google that actually makes more sense right now because Exynos 1080 could be that chipset for the next Pixel flagship phone. The Exynos 1080 processor is officially confirmed by Samsung and it's gonna be announced in a few days. It also thrashed Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 Plus in performance. It's already set to debut on a Vivo smartphone and eventually it will go towards other brands. The reason why other brands would choose this chip is because it has great performance but most importantly it's gonna be less pricey compared to what Qualcomm will offer. Now Samsung will reserve the best chip for themselves which is going to be the Exynos 2100 because this chip is their ultimate sauce. The reason why the Exynos 2100 could surpass Snapdragon 875 is because the Cortex X7 super core in the Exynos 2100 is set to clock above 3 gigahertz whereas Qualcomm 875 is set to be at 2.8 gigahertz. Also the GPU of Snapdragon 875 chip was about at the same level as the GPU of the Huawei Mate 40 Pro but as we know that same GPU of the Mate 40 Pro will be present inside the Exynos 2100 but at a higher configuration which also gives Samsung a chance to surpass Qualcomm in not just CPU but also in GPU numbers. Most likely the Exynos 2100 will be Samsung exclusive chip but the Exynos 1080 is going to be a solid processor at a solid good price and a lot of these brands could actually get benefit from it. I can't wait to see what Samsung has stored for us in 2021. Now let's talk about the S21 Ultra. Samsung is finally bringing a feature that I'm sure even the S20 Ultra was capable of. But anyways, the Quad HD 120Hz mode will be unlocked for the first time on a Samsung phone with the S21 Ultra. Perhaps the 5 nanometer chip efficiency has finally given Samsung the green light. We also have some more info on the camera of the S21 Ultra and it seems like I spoke too soon. The Galaxy S21 Ultra won't be having a TOF sensor according to ICE Universe. He definitely has a great track record. As always, ISOCELL HM3 108 maybe so sensor will be there with some slight improvements. Mostly the hardware will be similar but I'm sure Samsung can do a ton of improvement with the software especially with the addition of the laser autofocus. Now Samsung did officially announce the ISOCELL Vision 3 3D sensor. If not the S21 series, it might actually end up on the foldable Z lineup or perhaps the Galaxy Note 21. Now last but not the least, Ross Young has given us some update regarding the colors of the S21 model. So it seems like the Galaxy S21 Plus is getting the most colors with violet and the pink color. The pink variant might just be exclusive to South Korea. The S21 Ultra on the other hand is only getting two colors, black and silver. So the silver color is making its long awaited return. If you guys remember the silver look of the Galaxy Note 5 back in the days, it honestly looked pretty good. So that's all the big news. Samsung's ultimate big plan is all set. They're finally gonna challenge Qualcomm dominance next year. I can't wait to see what happens. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.